Hi and welcome. In today's video we're in the UK, and we'll be telling the tragic story of Sarah Everard. Sarah would go missing on her way home from a friend's house in London on March 3, 2021. The story would make international headlines and raise questions into the workings of London's Metropolitan Police. Let's take a look. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing, as we post true crime videos on a weekly basis. Sarah Everard was born in Surrey in the UK in 1987. She was the daughter of Father Jeremy, who was a college professor, and Mother Susan, who was a charity worker. Sarah was the baby of the family, having an older brother James, and sister Katie. Sarah moved from Surrey at an early age, and grew up in York, where she attended Fulford School. From there she went on to study human geography at Durham University, from 2005 to 2008. After graduating from university, she moved to the Brixton Hill area of London, and worked as a marketing executive for a digital media agency. Sarah was a fun-loving person with an infectious laugh, and always lived life to the full. She was the karaoke queen, who also loved to dance. Her family described her as a shining example, they said, Sarah was bright and beautiful, a wonderful daughter and sister. She always put others first, and had the most amazing sense of humor. She was strong and principled, and a shining example to us all. We are very proud of her, and she brought so much joy to our lives. Sarah had recently came away from a long-term relationship, but had again found love with new partner, Josh Louth, and together with four other friends, they planned to visit the island of Ibiza in the summer. On March 3, 2021, Sarah went to visit her friend, who lived in the Clapham Junction area of London, which is around two and a half miles from where she lived. She was seen on a security camera at Sainsbury's, buying a bottle of wine before heading over there. Sarah spent the day with her friends, chatting and having a glass of wine, before leaving around 9pm to make the short walk home, which she had done many times. Her route would take her along the busy South Circular Road, which has a high volume of traffic, and was thought to be a safe area to walk in. Phone records show that at 9.13pm, she telephoned her boyfriend Josh, and the pair chatted for around 15 minutes, planning a meet for the next day. At 9.15pm, Sarah is captured walking on her own, by CCTV cameras at the junction of Bowood Road. Fifteen minutes later, the next sighting is on Cavendish Road, and she is still alone. Five minutes after this, she is caught on the camera of an unmarked police car. At 9.35, a bus camera sees two figures on Poinders Road. They are standing beside a white Vauxhall Crossland, the car is parked on the pavement with its hazard lights flashing. This would be the last time Sarah would be seen alive. The next day, when Sarah failed to meet up with her boyfriend, he called police, and she was officially reported missing. Simon Harding, who led the investigation, realized this was out of character for Sarah, and was possibly looking at an abduction case. But with having no witnesses at this point, he had to wait for camera footage to be processed, which would take a few days. In the meantime, the news media were alerted, and posters were put up around London. It was a very high-profile case in England, and most people were aware that Sarah was missing. If she reappeared, someone would recognize her. When CCTV analysis came back, a London bus on the South Circular Road picked up Sarah, standing with a man who had both of his car doors wide open. When the images were enhanced, police were able to make out the car's registration plate. The car turned out to be a white Vauxhall Crossland. Owned by a car hire company based in Dover, which is approximately 80 miles from London, when they checked to see who hired the car, they got a shock. He was one of their own, a Metropolitan Police officer, named Wayne Cousins. So who exactly was Wayne Cousins? 
Wayne Cousins was born in Dover in 1972. He spent his childhood and school days in Dover in Kent. After leaving school, Cousins worked in the family business BCB Dover as a vehicle body repair technician, later working at the Dungeness nuclear power station in Kent. He would go on to meet his wife, Elena, who was from the Ukraine, and together the pair had two children and moved to Deal, in Kent. Cousins then joined the police force in 2005, working as a special constable for Kent Police. In 2015 he was questioned for indecent exposure, when he was spotted in a car, naked from the waist down by a passerby. Although police say, there was not enough evidence to charge him, and it was later dropped. In 2018, he joins the Metropolitan Police Force, commuting from his home in Dover. Then in 2019 he joins the Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command. There, he was given the nickname, The Rapist, by his colleagues, as they were aware of the violent adult videos he used to watch. A few days before Sarah's disappearance, Cousins was questioned by police about two separate incidents of indecent exposure, which happened at a McDonald's restaurant in South London. He is believed to have exposed himself, on two separate occasions to female members of staff. Cousins wasn't arrested or charged with the offences. Even though there were witnesses. Cousins had been planning the abduction and murder of a woman for at least three days. He had hired a car which resembled a police car, then spent hours looking around the streets of London, looking for a victim. He spotted Sarah walking alone, and pulled up alongside her, just outside Poinder's court. Cousins gets out of his car, and shows Sarah his police identification. Then falsely places her under arrest for breaking Covid rules. Taking advantage of his knowledge of policing during the pandemic. Security cameras on a passing bus catches the pair talking. And a witness sees Cousins putting handcuffs on Sarah then putting her into the back of his car. The car would then drive off, and head towards Dover. Police got to work trying to gather evidence against Cousins. They got data from mobile phone towers, and automatic number plate recognition cameras, and tracked his journey from London, where he abducted Sarah, down to Kent, using the A20, then the M20 motorway. He was then seen on CCTV, arriving at Dover in his Vauxhall hire car. He then drove to where he had parked his own vehicle. He would have at this point, transferred Sarah into his own car, and can be seen leaving on another camera 14 minutes later. He then drove to a remote rural spot to the northwest of Dover. It is there, where Cousins carried out his horrific attack on Sarah, she was violated in the worst possible way, then strangled to death with his police belt. Phone signal towers showed he travelled to the Ashford area between around 2.30am and 3.15am on the 4th of March. At 3.21pm, his car can be seen on a household CCTV near Hodeswood. Cousins and his wife had bought a piece of land at Hodeswood. It was isolated, making it the ideal place for him to dump Sarah's body. He arrived there, and placed Sarah's lifeless body into an old fridge, which someone had dumped on his land, he then left just before dawn. Cousins then casually went for a Costa coffee, then returned the hire car, before travelling to Sandwich where he threw Sarah's phone in a river. The next day, Cousins rang into work, informing them he would not be coming in due to stress. Later that day, he was again caught on CCTV buying rubble sacks at a DIY store. The day after, he was seen at a filling station, buying a can of petrol. He returned to Hodeswood. He used the petrol to burn Sarah's body and possessions inside the fridge, and then used the rubble sacks to transfer what remains were left from the fire. He discarded them in a nearby pond, which was just outside the boundary line of the land he had bought. On March the 7th, just two days later, Cousins bizarrely takes his wife and children on a family trip to Hodeswood, the place where just two days prior, he had burnt Sarah's body and dumped her remains. On the 9th of March, Kent police arrested Cousins at his home in Deal, on suspicion of kidnapping. Police arrived at his house at 5.45pm, 
and entered it at 7.50 p.m. to make the arrest. Around 40 minutes before he was arrested, Cousins tried to wipe the data from his mobile phone. When interviewed, he initially claimed not to recognize Sarah after being shown a photograph of her. He then makes up this cock and ball story about an Eastern European gang that was after him. Here's the video, did he really think police would believe that? We're here to talk to you about Sarah. Let me show you a picture. Do you okay. know Sarah? I don't know. So, would you like to, do you know where Sarah is? No. Right. Okay. Have you ever personally met her? No, not personally met her. You had any interactions with her at all? No, uh, why, why, why would I have personal interactions with her? I have a good think about it. And it's, Anything you can about whether or not time. Okay, um, well, I am in financial shit, um, and I've been um, lent on by, um, I don't know who they are, they're a group, a gang, whatever, um, and they told me why I need to go and pick up girls and give them to them. It then came through that they're gonna harm my family, take them away, and they'll use them instead. Um, at that point I had no option to try and find somebody. So I don't, um, there's just a couple of names I was told a place to um, take her. They um, are it was between sort of Lennon Maidstone area that I dropped her off. Um, I still don't know. I, I, I don't know. They they just I, I just um, parked my car up and then the van come up behind me, flashed me, and they all jumped out. Um, and then they, they, they took this girl. Uh, um, they said they said you've done good. And I don't know whether my family's going to be alright still. But they they threatened they threatened to take my family away from me. Um, open my door, open that door, um, pushed me out against the front of the car, took the girl, drove off. That's it. They said we'll be in touch. So I'm here. I'm off work with stress because. I'm here to protect my family. I want to be here 24-7 for my family. They come from my family. Okay. I've got nothing myself. But how do they contact you? How did you contact them? I tried to fuck over one of their cool girls and rip her off. Mm -hmm. So she's told them. And um, they, they, they've got me. Yeah, they're, they're, they'll, they'll come outside. So they'll be outside here. Yeah. And then they'll say, right, you're going to be in Folkestone at this time, or you're going to be in Ashford at this time. And that's it. There's no links, no telephone numbers. I'm completely on my own, but at the same time being threatened. Um, it had um, Romanian plates on the, on the van. Scratch marks on his head, he told officers, were caused by his dog. Cousin's bullshit story was quickly debunked by police, and the killer would go on to answer no comment during questioning. Police also took items from his home, including a roll of adhesive tape, a petrol can, boxes of latex gloves, a police badge and plastic cuffs, along with a sex aid. Several other items were recovered from Cousin's car, including a broken fragment of Sarah's SIM card, a handcuff key, Velcro straps, an unused condom, hairbands and lubricating jelly. He claims he bought the hairbands to wrap around his manhood, as he couldn't keep an erection. Hairbands? Really? A blood stain found on the back seat of the car matched Sarah's DNA, and semen found in the same location matched Cousin's genetic profile. Sarah's body was found by police in the pond where Cousins had dumped her, and two days later, police charged Cousins with Sarah's murder. At a hearing on the 9th of July, Cousins pleaded guilty to the murder of Sarah via video link from Belmarsh Prison. 
He kept his head down and was shaking slightly as the charges were read out to him. Sarah's mother, Susan addressed the court, saying she was repulsed by her daughter's killer. Sarah died in horrendous circumstances, I am tormented at the thought of what she endured, she told the court. In her last hours, she was faced with brutality and terror. Alone with someone intent on doing her harm. The thought of it is unbearable. I am haunted by the horror of it. The sentencing hearing, led by Lord Justice Fulford, began at the Old Bailey on 29 September, following medical and psychiatric reports. Cousins Barrister, Jim Sturman QC, asked Fulford to consider imposing a determinate sentence, which would allow Cousins to become eligible for parole in his 80s. But on 30 September, Cousins was sentenced to a whole life order, a sentence which is rarely given out in the UK. Lord Fulford justified the severity of the punishment by saying that Cousins used his position as a police officer to detain Sarah, which makes the seriousness of this case exceptionally high. Cousins was a sick and twisted individual who should have never been given a police uniform. He had three allegations of indecent exposure against him and none were followed up by police. Sarah's disappearance horrified the nation, the reaction to her horrific murder shone spotlight on violence against women in the UK. Thousands of people gathered in London for a vigil for Sarah, which police called illegal due to COVID lockdown measures. Police were criticised for their heavy-handed approach of the vigil after several women were arrested. Images of women being handcuffed and dragged away from the vigil spread quickly on social media, which changed people's opinion on the Metropolitan Police, especially when one of them had been charged with Sarah's murder. Although an independent inquiry cleared police for any wrongdoing at the vigil. The Metropolitan Police issued a statement, it read. Police officers at the vigil did their best to peacefully disperse the crowd. Police officers remained calm and professional when subjected to abuse, and officers did not act inappropriately or in a heavy-handed manner. Huge questions are made about the vetting of cousins, and the lack of any intervention before he committed the murder. In the aftermath of Cousins's life sentence, the Metropolitan Police have have issued advice to women on how they should interact with a lone police officer. The force says if women are unsure, they should shout for help, run to a house or call emergency services. How about the police make the streets a little safer for women instead? The mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has now instructed that any undercover police officers must work in pairs. Sarah's story touched the heart of the British people, let's hope the government learned by this and put measures in place to make women safer on the streets of the UK. Cousins is now off the streets and I'm pleased to say will die in prison, let's hope it's sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to see more content like this. Take care, I'll see you in the next video.